Yeah. Anya Khan from Rise Visible is going to be chiming in here in just a little bit. So um, why am I doing this? Uh, I'm really busy. Uh, I, I just don't have time. I don't have the time anymore to uh, do all my today's talks like I used to. So I'm going to be doing this on a weekly just to see how this goes. So if you are in this group of the Biz Network Referral and you are an expert in X, Y, or Z, then um, hook up. Uh, actually drop me a line in the chat. I'd love to have you on because something I've learned is uh, people like to talk to people and get a kind of hands-on experience. And sometimes it's just as simple as getting a question answered to build some business. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it live for a bit. I've got some questions. If you've got some questions for Anya, you can drop them in the comment box there in the group, or you can actually even go so far as to send me a question that I will actually put here in the chat, info at usbscloud.com. Yeah, that's me. So um, we're gonna see how this works all without a net. Hey, there she is. Let's see how this goes. Hello. <laughs> She's connecting now. She's connecting. She's connecting. There is technology connecting. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey. Woo we made it. We made it. So I, I don't know how this is going to go since you're the inaugural. And I like to pretend I'm a nerd expert, but I'm really not. I just play one on TV or on the internet. <laughs> so welcome. Everybody, this is Anya. Anya Khan from Rise Visible. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good today. It's nice out there in the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful weather today so no complaints no nothing's complaints. on fire currently here nothing's on fire locally. yeah <laughs> locally knock on wood knock on wood so i appreciate you you checking in with this i think um as i tell people um something that i've learned in the whole world of consulting um i try to get to the point where i find people's pain and what they're dealing with and a lot of times i'll tell people i know just about enough to find you help. And I can usually get a question okay. answered. And a lot of times finding that expert in that particular field. So, you know, going from that platform I did before, and I still do it from time to time with today's talk, I want to kind of give people access to some experts with some questions that maybe they can get answered now. And maybe that, you know, I'm sure uh, you're, you're not full of customers, right? You, you always could use some business. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're always, I think everybody's always open to, you know, new potential relationships, right? You just never know. Even if you are busy and you're full, you just never know who might stop into your world and change your life. Right, right. So I'm going to just go through the questions that um, I did have for you that came in. And we're just going to kind of just see if anybody, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat because the chat is live right now. Just making sure. Yep. Here we go. It, it says live chat over here. So that means that it's live. So feel free to put a question in there. I'll be looking from time to time. So uh, someone asked, do I need a website? This is something that I always find is, is interesting because people start a business and like, okay, I got to get a website. So do I need a website? Well, that's a great question. It really depends on the business that you're running. But in this day and age, websites are something that if you don't have, unfortunately, people are not going to take you very seriously. So if you're out there conducting business, you're in a networking group, or however you're connecting with people and someone learns about your business and then they want to go look you up, if you only have perhaps a Facebook, an Instagram, things like that, which are paramount to businesses, but you don't actually have a physical website, the automatic reaction from most consumers is going to be, this person isn't really that serious. 
about what they're doing. And when we're talking about websites, we don't mean that they have to be completely crazy in depth. You don't have to get a web designer to build them for you. Of course, there's drag and drop builders and there's positives to that versus, a, you know, working with a designer. Mm -hmm. But just having a website, even if it's a one page, decently designed website that showcases you as a business is going to take you a lot further than sending somebody to a Facebook page or an Instagram or even your LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is absolutely wonderful for businesses, but that's a social networking thing. That is not your portfolio or the way that you are showcasing your services or what you provide to the world. And you want to be taken seriously. Well, that's a really good point too, because I think about that um, when it comes down to the mindset of website, because I, I actually got a little help building my website and um, I did, I used WordPress and, you know, to your point, you know, so there's, there's builders out there. You, know, you can kind of get into the drag and drop the whole mindset. I thought it was going to be, and it is, don't folks, don't get me wrong. You know, it, it is sometimes a little tough, but it's, it's, it's more in your mind than anything else. It, it can be a little daunting, but you just got to be patient. When it comes to that comparison between do I go WordPress, do I go to one of these pre-built things, what's best? You know, what, what's the best way to start? Do you, do you have any recommendation for that? Yeah, so for me, we build, my agency builds most websites either in HTML or we're building them off WordPress because that is one of the largest um, open source platforms in the world. And it's just excellent. You have so many ways that you can transform it from being somebody who knows nothing and getting through that learning curve, right? <laughs> or, you know, being an expert and being able to do coding and really complex things with WordPress. But WordPress itself as a as a um, management system is a lot different than if you were going to be using Wix or Weebly or let's say GoDaddy. So GoDaddy has builders. There's other hosting that offers builders. And no matter what you're going to do, you're going to have a learning curve. If you're going to go with Wix, there's a learning curve there. Squarespace, there's a learning curve. WordPress is a learning curve. And it depends on, for you, how far do you want that to go? Do you in fact, want to spend the time learning? Or are you like, I have better things to do and I would rather pay somebody to do it? As for, I will say this, as for the ability to update it and keep it going once it's designed, if a developer does it for you, it's just as easy as if you were to do it through a Wix or a Squarespace. That's one thing that's a common misunderstanding. People think, oh, okay, well, even if somebody designs it in WordPress for me, how hard is it going to be for me to update that when I can use a drag and drop system and I can update it easily? Both are actually very easy to update. It's really the in implementation of what you're wanting to do and how far that you want to go. Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, not a lot of space to grow. Mm -hmm. And they're actually a lot more expensive in the long run, which people don't think much of because they're spending um, an exorbitant amount a month, usually when you're going into e-commerce or other things, when you can look at getting really solid quality hosting for like 100 to $150 a year versus what people are paying monthly. So it's, it's a, a monetary thing to think about too. Is it better to invest a little bit of money into helping somebody helping design it for you or being a partner in that design process or giving them total control? Or is it better to take all that energy and time yourself and you're putting all that money and energy and then you still have to pay so much monthly over time? So it's it's really dependent on that. And back to the point of editing and updating things. Mm -hmm. You know, I have worked a lot with people down locally at Saturday Market. And oh, I worked with a, a demographic of people that are older yeah. and that are not completely savvy with the web. And they have had zero problem getting a WordPress and me showing them how to do it and them editing it themselves. So when I speak to people and they're like, well, I don't know about that. I'm like, 
I have taken a demographic of people that are generally just not tech savvy, not for any fault of their own. It's just they're different generation. They they weren't born like Gen, you know, Gen Zers who come in and there's a completely they, different, you know, relationship. Yeah, they, they just kind of like come out like speaking code. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't know the other thing, but it's been no problem for people to move into that. So the other thing also about drag and drop is you don't have a lot of ability to make it very specific to yourself. And as somebody who believes in aesthetics and believes in branding, because we do branding, coming out of the gate and showing yourself off, if your site looks like everybody else's, it's just, again, something that's going to get lost in the digital shuffle because we're all so busy. We are all like looking at things, gathering information, you know, trying to like have kids and have lives and deal with COVID. And we're busy, 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 busy. That if your site doesn't stand out, if it doesn't come out and go like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Oh, that, you know, it challenges somebody to like think a little bit more rather than, oh, that looks like every Joe Schmo who's, right, a, yeah. who's a coach you know, website or every this or that, you want to have your own identity. So that's also some play, some way to think. And you can always start with one and move to the other. If you're starting out and you're like, I just need this basic thing. I don't have the money to pay for something. I just want to do a quick drag and drop, do it. Then build your business up and then move into a more comprehensive uh, growth space down the road. Yeah, well, let me let me t let me tap your brain a little bit on what you just said as far as grabbing attention, and let's talk about where you and I always talk about in the in the disability space. You as a business and, and working as a someone that's disabled, and me mm -hmm. got that whole mindset of I've got ADHD, so I I focus on disability. People trying to access the web. Now, sure. I, I know the, the the first initial thought process for people is let me put a lot of stuff out there to grab attention. But it, for me, I tell people that's the wrong way to go because literally I won't be on your site for more than a second because it's, it's overwhelming. I, I can't be there. So what's, what's, a, what's a, a good tip? What's, maybe what's like, what's like one thing you could say, here's one thing that you can do to grab someone's attention. Well, one of the things that you can do to grab someone's attention is not overwhelm them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like flashing lights and this and that. Right. So when people don't have a design background, they go into site design with this idea that more is going to attract attention. If I put more text, I put more images, I put all these things in there. I just want to make sure I'm hitting everything. But really, the best way to gain attention is to really point someone's attention to one very specific call to action. So this is in all marketing, whether or not it's a website, it's a print advertisement, it's a direct mailer. You're really wanting to look at what is your call to action? What do you want them to do? So for an example, on our website, automatically in the hero section, so the hero section is often that big space at the image at the top. Mm -hmm. We automatically tell people what we do, how we're going to help them and contact us to start that conversation automatically with a button. We don't give too much information. We're not, you know, unloading stuff for you. The thing with the website is you do want to have enough information to provide that for somebody, but you also want to give them the opportunity to also dig a little deeper. Oh, okay. I would like to make this call or you know what, maybe that call to action isn't going to work, but they're going to scroll down the page and they're going to see your services and a service might trigger them to go, oh my goodness, that's exactly the thing I was looking for. And then there's a button or a link that's going to send you somewhere that's going to send you where you need to go. So there needs to be those points where you're really narrowing in that question for yourself. So as a business, you need to ask yourself, what do you want your clients to do? Do you want them to buy something from your store? Do you want them to call you and consult with you? Is your site more of a site that's really informative and you want them to read more of your blogs and you're really not providing any sort of service, but you're more informative? 
it's really finding that call to action. Cool. Good, good answer. Now, something else that always jumps out at me and people I talk about some talk, talk to sometimes when it comes to the websites are all the terminology, you know, mm -hmm. CRM, SEM, SEO, EIEIO. So what's the <laughs> big one? Yeah. SEO. What is SEO and why is it a Sure. So this is, of course, nowadays become this buzzword, right? You must have SEO for your website. I can't tell you how many people just call me up and go, I have a website. I know I'm supposed to get SEO. Can you get me <laughs> SEO? <laughs> Where's the SEO store? Can, I, can, can you direct me to it? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So search engine optimization. So SEO is obviously the acronym for that. And search engine optimization has been around for a very, very long time, 20 years plus. It's nothing new. But as Google and other, see, I totally tripped on that. Google, Google. <laughs> it's never, it's never good. Okay. So Google and other search engines, they have qualifications and things that they put out there that let people know what they require for websites to be ranked. So over time, this is why I love this industry with web design and SEO and all the other nonsense I do is because it's ever changing. Yeah. The landscape is ever changing and it's not to trip you up or make it complicated. It's because we're learning new things. We're learning things about accessibility. And so now Google, a lot of their, their implement, implementations and things that they're asking have to do with accessibility to your website and for people to be able to navigate it and have a user experience that's going to be positive as well as they want, they just brought out this thing called EAT, which is they want you to be an authority. They want you to be, they want you to be an ex expert authority. And then what is the T? I'm on this. And of course, I'm going to forget truthful. Oh my goodness. I think it's trustworthy. Yes, that's what it is. So trustworthy. And so before I I met a lot with clients and they're like, well, I have all this stuff on my website, all this content. It's like, yes. And this many years ago, Google was about a large array of content. They wanted your site to be packed with information, but then they started noticing that people were keyword stuffing. And what that means is they were creating a robust amount of text that was just packed with keywords to just rank rather than providing quality content. And that's what Google wants. It wants quality content that has authority, that is trustworthy. And so SEO is basically that. But of course, there's all these other components of SEO. So SEO is how you're ranking on search engines, not just Google, you know, Bing and DuckDuckGo and other, other ones. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with your website itself, its user experience, the content on there, the coding on the back. SEO also has to do with your social media presence. I mean, SEO really just encompasses you as a whole and how your business is being seen by the web, even beyond your own website, and that you're providing good content, and that you know you are an authority in your field, and that you're not out there just putting out nonsense. People used right. to put out blogs all the time. Like, I'm just going to put out a blog and a blog and a blog. And that and would that help that was, SEO. <laughs> it was good. It was yeah. good for SEO. And now Google's like, yeah, don't do that. No. Like, write a blog. Here's the number of words. Here's how it should be lined out. Make sure you're using H1. You know, there's all of these specific things. And I know that it sounds, you know, what I hear from people is this sounds so intense and there's so many things to it. Or I hear the other, well, I went ahead and put alt tags on my website and make sure that my H1s were good. You know, my SEO must be great. It's like, no, it's a very complex circumstance but it's not something that is unreachable. It's not something that anybody can't do or can't hire somebody to do if they want to learn it. I mean, if you want to learn SEO, put in, make sure, you know, I'm going to put this out there because there's a lot of business owners who are like, well, I'd like to learn SEO. And what I like to tell people, because I want people to learn themselves, Marty, if the people want to take it learn. into their own hands yeah. and do it. You know, if you want to learn a platform, then do it. 
And SEO is one of those things that I tell people, at least give yourself a year. You're going to have to know a lot about web design and coding and backend stuff before you can even think about SEO. You can put in an alt tag all you want in, you know, in your WordPress, or you can use Yoast and you can make sure you got your, you know, your meta, but those are really just basic on the top of the cake. You know, that's just kind of the frosting that everybody gets. But there's multiple layers to SEO. You have to stack it all in a good way so that it plays well and then it delivers well. Because when your website is shown to people, what people don't understand is we view it in this imagery. But Google and other you know, search engines and things that you know, judge your site, they look at it as pure code. And if that code doesn't come in, it's not going to rank. It's not going to be crawled appropriately. Google isn't going to assimilate that for you or other search engines. So it's it's complex, but it's beautiful. I love it. It's 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 a wonderful, wonderful field to be in. And it's not something that you should take lightly if you want your sites to rank, if you have competitors. You know, there's keyword research, there's competitor research. And this is the last tip I want to give about this because this is important. Being somebody in tech, I will tell you that there are many people who take advantage of people based on the fact that they know more in an industry than other people. Oh my gosh. And yeah. SEO is one of those ways. Just like I cannot tell you, it's awful. I cannot tell you how many times I have worked with a client who said, oh, this company did SEO for me for six months. And I go in and basic level SEO isn't there. Like there's no alt tags. There's no, you know, their site map isn't there. Yeah. And the reason I mentioned that is there are measurable ways and reporting that you must request from an agency for proof that, they're doing that they are doing it. And you can go out there and go to different sites like SEMrush or Moz and run your own audit for free so that you can compare to the work that they're doing. Because people will take advantage of people that don't know, take hundreds of thousands of dollars from them a year and are not providing results. Yeah. And a person doesn't know that they can request those results or that there is even a way to quantify those results. That is such, that is such a good point. And that, that you, you speak my language. That's exactly why I do the whole accessibility consulting, because there's a whole army of folks out there that say, yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Just slap this on your website and you'll be fine. You got, you're, you're doing great. And I'm like, no, 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 that doesn't mean you're okay. There's a lot of things you have to do. You know, it's a moving target. There's things you have to continually do. It's not something you just set it and forget it. No, that's, it's not that simple. Yeah. But website and like, SEO both are not static. No, they are not. Can, so. They're just not. If you build, if you have a website out there and you're not adding to it, you're not updating it, there isn't content regularly being, you know, added or adjusted like a blog, you're just going to be forgotten right. by Google and other search engines because you're not, again, providing quality content or you're not even showing that you care. You know, just like everything else, social media, you know, all these other things, the the industries want you not the industries but the platforms want you to be active they want you to be showing up and doing the thing and you know what if you do not want to because this is the other conversation i have with people who come in and they ask about seo or they ask about marketing and i lay out the amount of work that it's going to take for me but i also lay out the amount of work it's going to take for them because this is a partnership and a team thing unless you're just going to pay me to do it all that's fine right. but really it's more about a partnership and you're going to have to be a part of that in your marketing you're going to have to be a part of that and sometimes people don't want to i can't tell you how many times somebody's like oh my goodness i'm going to have to do that i'm going to have to do this is this is this really what i have to do to like stay visible or get my website even seen and I'm like, unfortunately, yes, you do. And if you don't want to invest that kind of time, 
because I had a gentleman recently contact me and he was an older gentleman who was an architect. And he was like, I want my website to get more visibility. And his website hadn't been updated since, I don't know, probably early 2000s. I think it had oh different colors. It had like hot pink and bright green. And, and I was like, we have to start first just talking about needing a complete and utter redesign. And the fact that if you want it, he's like, I want to rank number one on Google. I want people to see me. And I'm like, you tell me that you're in your 80s, that you want to spend time with your kids, you want to spend time with your grandkids. You've already had your heyday as an architect. Right. This is probably not the time for you to think about marketing. Probably just leave it as it is, because otherwise you're going to have to put the time in. You're just going to have to get on social, get that site up to date, make sure you have content that's quality and, you know, consistency. And it's, it keeps going. And right. he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking that's a no. And I was like, yeah, it is. Like, I don't like to give people false hope. Yeah, it's a hard conversation. It's like when I help people work with their LinkedIn stuff, I tell them it. literally, if you're if you're not going to be there, get rid of your profile. I mean, it just makes no sense. It's a, it's a digital representation of you in a mm-hmm. professional space. It's like going to a professional networking meeting and sitting in the corner and not talking to someone. <laughs> <laughs> So just get off of there. Like, oh, I didn't think about it that way. So it's the same thing with your yeah. website. So I appreciate totally. that. Well, yeah, I don't want to keep you all day. I mean, I do have a couple more questions, but I do really appreciate this. We've got next week. So folks, yeah, we got we'll we've be, got three more weeks. Got three more of weeks this. of this. If you'd like again to be an expert, um, definitely send me um, an email. The info, the e- email is in the uh, chat. I'm going to put your website and chat as well awesome i think it's there i think that's the right one better be right Mm -hmm. yeah okay i hope that's right i'll I'll look risevisible.com yeah okay oh chat in there i'm looking at i'm looking at zoom (laughs) (laughs) okay i don't see it all right. So thanks again for being on with me and um, I will see you later. Okay, so yeah. you have a great day. And folks, thanks for tuning in for half of your day for your lunch. This has been Ask the Expert with me, Marty Lee, and I got to see. You came up from the basement, hit the rooftop with a passion. Bad with some good credit.